Hey guys, how's it going? Today I wanted to film a video on head drains for CAs and RBs and why you may or why you may not actually require one. What are they? How do they work? Um, and what issue are they trying to solve? So I've just collated a few pictures for reference here that I wanted to talk through on how they actually work and what they actually are first. There's a bunch of different companies that make them, but essentially it's a fitting that you drill and tap into the cylinder head of an RB or a CA that allows extra oil and gas to flow back from the cylinder head to the sump or a fitting on the block. For example here, this is a, an RB26 engine and it's a single turbo and Normally it has two oil returns for the two turbos, but in this case they're using the second return for the back turbo for the head drain return. And here is another fitting. This one's a bit more like a bulkhead that has a AN thread tapped into it. It can return the oil as well. This is an example of a CA head where they've pressed in an AN fitting. Normally they have some sort of o-ring seal as well to stop oil leaking out. This one is a PRP kit. So this one actually has the oil return and also water fitting on it as well. Okay, so why would you actually want to install one? So RBs and CAs, these early Nissan engines were known for having issues where oil was accumulating into the cylinder head and not returning under high revs and when all your oil sitting in the cylinder head and not returning to the sump you then have a lack of oil supply for the sump to pick up and distribute through the rest of the engine calling causing premature uh, bearing failure and wearing other components in the engine so what people have come up with is installing a head drain which gets that oil from the head back down into the sump so you don't get any cavitation or starvation from the oil pump. Another thing what people did to help try and resolve the issue is install oil restrictor into the head. They actually prevented excess oil traveling to the cylinder head to actually prevent the issue starting in the first place. So here you can see the oil restrictor installed into a block here's just a bunch of different size you can they sell them in like one mil two mil three mil you just can easily pull them out of your block and tap in a different size restrictor so some things you want to look at as well is people like to install high volume high capacity oil pumps on their car for example this one because they think they have an oiling issue um, that may be solved by using a head drain But when you go put a high flow oil pump on your car It's essentially it might exacerbate the issue because you're just going to pump that oil into the head quicker than you would with a normal oil pump But the example with this Nudo one is that it does have billet gears which is going to help in that regard as well For the CA for example here in the middle you've got the oil return and you've got the oil feed so one thing you can do is look at porting out the oil return if you've got the block apart and the cylinder head off that's just going to give you a slightly increased flow back to the sump but i think it's important to understand why the factory oil return isn't enough for when you go boosted so here i've got a diagram that I found on Google Images of what blow-by is. So on every combustion engine there is some sort of blow-by and what that is is the combustion pressure escaping past the cylinder rings and entering into the crankcase. So this blow-by that's accumulating into the crankcase has to go somewhere and generally it has to go back up through the block into the cylinder head and then out of the cylinder head somewhere. So when you're boosting an engine and adding more cylinder pressure, the amount of combustion pressure is going to increase and the amount of blow-by is probably going to increase as well. 
So more com combustion pressure is gonna help seat seal that ring by pushing it out onto the bore of the engine, but you're still gonna have a lot of blow by coming through. So more revs, more compression, more compression ratio, more boost is gonna give you more blow by. So there's another example here. And in the middle here, they don't show the pistons and cylinder, but this is the engine. And here is the sump. So you've got your blow by coming past the pistons. And in some cases, the crankcase might be the front timing chain area where it makes its way into the valve cover, the top of the engine. And in other cars, they actually have like an oil catch can separator. Um, the SRs came with it, like the B series have it. So when that vapor and oil makes its way back up into the cylinder head, it actually goes through this catch can first to actually separate as much oil as possible to stop it getting back into the cylinder head. Once that gas makes its way into the cylinder head, it usually goes through a PCV valve, which is positive crankcase ventilation. So when the intake manifold is actually in negative pressure, it can actually draw the vapor out from the engine. And when there's boost, it actually blocks the pressure going back into the crankcase because you don't want to be forcing pressurized air that your engine needs for combustion into your crankcase. Other people might have, for example, um, the PCV blocked and have like a catch can that might flow back into the intake of the engine or to atmosphere. So when you're adding more pressure to the engine and there's more boost and more blow by, that oil return from the cylinder head to the sump is also sharing the gases trying to make its way up. So you've got oil coming down, trying to return, and also gases trying to make their way out. So the more revs and the more blow by you've got, you've got these opposing forces. So by adding the cylinder head drain, it actually gives another path for the oil and the gas to move from the bottom of the engine to the top. So it sort of, it solves two issues there. It helps the breathing and it also helps the oil flow issue at the same time. But just to finish that off, you need to also couple it with a good catch can setup. So if you've got the gases making its way to the top of the engine, it also needs to make its way out. So you need to make sure you've got amply sized AN or fittings on your rocker cover that go to a catch can, either if you're recirculating that or going to atmosphere, that's another whole discussion. But just need to make sure that you're getting that oil out of the engine. So in most cases, you're gonna to have to install another fitting on the sump. In the case of the RB26, they're lucky they've got a spare fitting there if you're single turbo but I would recommend putting it back right into the sump. So you're gonna be connected to the lowest point and to the highest point of the engine. CAs and some RBs actually had like another breather pipe that come out the side of the engine as well from the block. Um, if you've taken the intake manifold off, you'll see it's under there as well. But in conclusion, when would you actually need to use one? I would say if you're a big turbo, you're running big boosts like over 18 PSI, maybe you've bumped up the compression ratio, you've got a looser piston ring gap and you've got a lot more blow by, then go ahead and do it. It is good prevention and insurance to make sure nothing's gonna happen. But if you've got a pretty stock setup, you're only like 12, 14 PSI, you're still T25, T28 and maybe you've just rebuilt your engine and the tolerances aren't that loose, then you probably don't need to do it. So I hope this video has helped out a few people and sort of cleared up and helped understand what's going on. If you have any questions, pop them down below. Uh, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.